Imagine a temple so massive and intricately carved that it defies everything we know about ancient construction, a structure made from a single block of stone with no room for error, a feat so ambitious that it leaves you wondering, how did they do it? Was it really just 7,000 workers chipping away with simple tools, or could there be something more, something hidden beneath the surface of history? The Kyasa Temple isn't just a masterpiece of art, it's a riddle carved into stone that challenges everything we understand about the ancient world. Here's the real mystery. Where did all the stone go? How did they carve from the top down without a single mistake? And why do some believe there's more to this temple than meets the eye? The Legend of Queen Manava In the heart of India lies a mystery centuries old, intricately carved into stone, the Kyasa Temple. Nestled within the majestic Aora Caves, this temple holds stories of kings, queens, gods, and legends that have endured through time. Among these tales is the captivating story of Queen Manava of the ancient kingdom of Alapa. Legend has it that her husband, a king from Alad Shapura, was cursed with an incurable illness, a punishment for sins committed in a past life. Desperate for a cure, the king embarked on a hunting trip to Mahi Somala near Aora, while the queen devoted herself to prayer seeking Lord Shiva's incarnation, Gishnesa. This was her singular vow. If her husband were healed, she would construct a temple in the god's honor. Miraculously, after bathing in a sacred tank, the king's ailment vanished. True to her word, the queen immediately commissioned the temple. She also decided to complete the project before breaking her fast. However, no architect dared to meet the queen's demands until a humble local craftsman named Kakosa from Python stepped forward. He promised to build the temple from the top down within just a week. The queen witnessed the temple's crowning structure, or Oscara, rising from the sky. The temple was named Manaswar in her honor, and the city of Alapa, now known as Aora, was born. This tale merely sets the stage for the Kyasa temple story, the mighty Rashtrakuta dynasty. Fast forward to the 8th century CE, when the mighty Rashtrakuta dynasty, having overthrown the western Shalas, claimed the Deccan Plateau. It was during this period that King Krishna the Fern commissioned the Kyasa temple, named after the sacred mountain in Shiva's mythology. Carved from a singular monolithic rock, this temple represents not just a feat of devotion, but also an unimaginable architectural genius. Stretching 300 feet long and 175 feet wide, the entire structure was carved vertically into the rock, an extraordinary endeavor accomplished without scaffolding and using only simple tools like chisels and hammers. While watching this video, you can't help but wonder, how did they achieve this? Scholars estimate that over one and a half to two million cubic feet of rock were removed to create the temple. The builders made this monumental structure from the Sayadri Hills volcanic basalt, sculpting massive trenches straight down into the hillside. Yet, one of the greatest mysteries remains unsolved. Where did all that stone go? Human labor and precision. The more plausible explanation lies in the unique properties of the local rock itself. You see, the outer layers were softer and more easily chiseled away, while the harder core remained intact for the intricate details. Masons and sculptors worked in harmony. One team removed rock while another began the elaborate carvings immediately. This coordination allowed them to shape the temple with remarkable precision, despite the absence of modern technology. Architects likely used a model to guide their work, possibly drawing inspiration from the Vupaka temple in Patal, which shares design similarities. However, while Vupaka is impressive, Kyasa is twice its size. Stepping inside the main portico, you are welcomed by divine imagery. A carved panel shows Gajalakshmi seated on a lotus, with four elephants pouring water over her, a symbol of prosperity for all who worship Shiva. At the heart of the complex, the Sarva rises 96 feet into the sky, crowned by an octagonal shape typical of Dravidian architecture, spiritual journey, and cultural heritage. Surrounding the sanctum are intricately carved halls and mandapas, 
life-size elephant sculptures seem to bear the temple's weight on their backs. The towering victory pillars, each standing 45 feet tall, greet visitors near the temple's entrance. On either side of the temple's main shrine, panels depict scenes from India's greatest epics, the Ramayana and the Mahabharata, in vivid detail. The Ramayana carvings narrate Rama's exile, Sita's abduction, and the ultimate battle between good and evil as Hanuman leads the army of monkeys to Lanka. The Mahabharata panel tells of Krishna's exploits and the fierce battle that determined the fate of the Pandavas and the Kauravas. The radiant temple Imagine, standing before the Kyasa temple in its prime, Legends say its towering walls were once coated in a brilliant white plaster so radiant it mirrored the sacred Mount Kalash, said to be Shiva's celestial home. As sunlight struck the temple, it felt as though the very mountain had descended to earth. But beneath the temple's brilliance lies an even deeper story. Scholars believe the temple was once called the Rang Mahal, the Painted Palace. They claim the walls weren't just carved but alive with vibrant frescoes, gods, demons, and heroes painted in bold colors across the stone. Though time has faded these scenes, fragments of the once vibrant artwork still cling to the temple. On the temple's southern side, etched into the rock, a powerful story comes to life. Ravana, the ten-headed demon king, in a moment of defiance, shakes Mount Kalash, challenging the gods. With a mere press of his toe, Shiva subdues the demon's power, reminding the world of his quiet yet absolute strength. Theory of Devotion and Sheer Human Labor Let's start with the most popular theory. This monument was made by pure devotion and sheer human labor. 7,000 workers toiling under the hot sun, chiseling away at the mountain stone for 18 long years. That's nearly two decades of relentless hammering and chiseling, slowly extracting almost four lakh tons of rock. Imagine the constant rhythm of hammer striking stone, the air thick with dust, the weight of such an enormous task hanging over them. They would have had to remove roughly 60 tons of stone every single day, working with nothing more than rudimentary tools, hammers, chisels, and mayers. It's not just the sheer volume of rock that's mind-boggling, it's the precision carving from the top down. The workers couldn't afford to make a single mistake, one wrong stroke, and the entire structure could have been compromised. Yet, against all odds, they pulled it off, creating a masterpiece that has stood the test of time. Advanced technology or extraterrestrial involvement, however, as impressive as this theory of human labor is, it still raises questions that remain unanswered to this day. Where did all the stone go? There's no evidence of piles of rock or a nearby quarry large enough to hold the debris from such a massive excavation. It's a mystery that continues to baffle historians and archaeologists alike. Some speculate that the Kyasa Temple's creation required something more, perhaps advanced technology or even extraterrestrial intervention. The Coral Castle and Hypogeum. Imagine energy-based tools, lasers, or some kind of unknown technology at work, slicing through the mountain with an ease far beyond what hammers and chisels could ever accomplish. This theory isn't far-fetched when you consider other ancient marvels. For instance, the Coral Castle in Florida was built single-handedly by Edward Leeds Callan, moving enormous coral blocks without modern machinery. Then there's the Hypogeum of Hal Safliani in Malta, a subterranean temple complex carved out of solid limestone with deep acoustical mysteries. Thanks for watching. Please like the video, press the subscribe button, and also drop your thoughts in the comment section.